So before I get on with this robot review, I figured it was time for a bit of a change when it comes to how I review these robots. Anyone who has watched my videos for a while now will know that I use two criteria to review the robots I discuss. Effectiveness and entertainment. However, I've come to realise that this isn't really the best way to go. Effectiveness is such a grey area considering a lot goes into a robot being effective. There's a robot's reliability, how much its design benefits it in battle, its weaponry and other contributing factors. Also, I decided that judging how good a robot is by how much it entertained me is honestly unfair. For example, I only gave Dan Tom Kier an 11 out of 20 rating for its Series 6 7 appearance because it didn't entertain me. A rating like that makes it look like an average robot at best, which is completely untrue. It was effective, well designed, and had a great weapon, proved by the fact that it made back-to-back -back semi-finals. For me to give it such an average rating because I found it a bit boring is really unfair, so I've decided to change things a bit. Now our review will be split into two parts. The first part will be me reviewing the robot in question based on four criteria, whilst the second part will have me saying my personal thoughts on the robot. That way, a fair review will be made on the robot, and then I can badger it for being dull in my opinion without it affecting the overall score. The four criteria I will be using are as follows. Design. This will be judged by how a robot design benefited it in battle. For example, good looking robots won't score much if said looks hindered it. Tun Turun, for example, looked beautiful, but its design didn't really aid it in its one and only fight. Pussycat, Bigger Brother and Atomic meanwhile all had designs that allowed them to go far and win battles convincingly so they would score high. Weaponry This is pretty self-explanatory. The better the robot's weapon, the more points it scores. Original weapons will only score points if they are effective, so you won't see Dark Destroyer's wagglers making any points for example. Reliability This again is self-explanatory. A robot that can take tons of hard hits and still move at the end of it will obviously score highly, whilst robots that conk out under mild pressure will score pitifully. For example, Wild Thing would gain a high score because it wouldn't fucking die, whilst robots like Red Dragon, Backstabber and Hassock's Hogs would score low. And finally, character. This will be scored on any of the following. Originality, looks, the ability to create memorable moments and how much of a fight the robot gives. Robots like Terrapin, Banshee, Fatboy Tin and Little Fly will most likely score high in this category because they all either looked good, were original, made memorable moments or at least tried really hard in their battles. All four of these criteria will be scored out of a grand total of 5 points, giving each robot a total score out of 20. God I hope that all makes sense. So now we've got all that out of the way, what robot am I reviewing today again? Oh fuck! Hey guys, I'm Anderson9132, and I'm the WHY! 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 Why was this accepted at the Series 6 qualifiers? This of all things! Look at it! Dr. Fist is highly regarded as one of the worst robots to have ever entered Robot Wars, and considering this show gave us Juggernaut 2, Frostbite, Cobra, and Monad, that's fucking saying something. And this was made at the time of Series 6. Series 6! You know, the series that gave us Raging Reality, Dan Tom Kier, Chompalot, and Vader! Oh, let's just get this over with. Design. It's bloody awful. I'll give Dr. Fizz this though. It's invertible, which could potentially help it against flippers, but that's where the credit ends, I'm afraid. I honestly wonder if the guys behind this one took one step back and actually looked at it. The same wheels that made it invertible were also extremely exposed to the point that they may as well have had Oi Gov! Hit his ear! written on them. And the scoop that was meant to guide robot into the disc ended up hindering said disc instead. Take a look at Pussycat which had a similar weapon. The reason it was so effective was because it had a solar system of space around it so nothing blocked robots from being hit. But that guiding scoop of Dr. Fist left absolutely no room to robots to be attacked by its weapon. Look at the gap! Anvil would struggle to fit in there! How do scoops designed to help your weapon end up hindering it? Oh, and the robot was also so blocky that it managed to get stuck on its side in both of its battles. 
And this is a robot that's supposed to be invertible with wheels that should easily stop such a thing from happening. Remind me how this was supposed to win again? It has three huge flaws. Exposed wheels, a design that hinders its own weapon, and it gets stuck easily. I can't even give it any marks of being invertible because said wheels failed to help them when needed. Not out of five for design. Weaponry. Fuck me. There have been some pretty bad weapons in Robot Wars, whether it's Frostbite's Spinner or Dark Destroy's Wagglers, but I think Dr. Fist's disc has to rank pretty high up there. Like I said, thanks to the scoop, there's not really much space for its weapon to hit anything. Also, it spins down, reducing any kinetic energy it has built up into hitting its opponent. Also, it's completely useless because it has less than an inch of space between its scoop and its disc. And its weapon barely worked in either of its battles. Hell, it didn't work in its first fight. Do I even need to say what score I'm going to give this one? Not out of five. Reliability. Oh, Jesus. I honestly think the term reliability was lost on this team. In its Series 6 battle, it barely moved before breaking down after being pushed across the arena by Dan Tom Kier. This is Series 1 levels of reliability! In its second fight, it didn't even get going, losing drive on one side almost immediately. So in both battles, it barely worked and died almost on the word activate. Oh, and its weapon barely worked either, which counts as poor reliability. Not out of five, character. <laughs> You're joking, right? This robot turned up, broke down, and fucked off. That's it. It didn't even try to make a fist of it, pun intended. It didn't look good, brought nothing to the table, and wasn't memorable at all because it did fucking nothing. And that sums up this robot. It's nothing. Fuck's sakes, opening kill victims in slasher movies are more character than this thing. Nor out of five, giving Dr. Fist a pitiful nor out of 20 rating. So after all that, what are my views? It's horrendous! No offence to the team because in all honesty I doubt I could do better, hence why I haven't built a robot, but this is easily the worst robot in Robot Wars history. It has to be! I don't care what anyone else says, no matter how bad another robot is, you can always say, hey, at least it's not Dr. Fist. <laughs> it has become an actual scale of how bad a combat robot could possibly be. Bugs from Series 1 could beat this thing! At least that robot could move! Still, fair play to the team for actually trying. That does put them one step above me, after all. And that's it for this review and this video. Do you agree with my thoughts or do you think I'm talking cack? What do you think of this new layout? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, a huge thank you to World of Woodrow for the new Guru logo. I absolutely love it. Check out his channel down below as well. Thank you very much for watching. I've been Anson9132, the Rebels Guru, and I'll see you next time.